if you think we're on the run We are the boys who will stop your little game We are the boys who will make you think again Cause who do you think you are kidding Mr. Hitler If you think old England's done Mr. Brown goes off to town on the A21 But he comes home each evening and he's ready with his gun So who do you think you are kidding Mr. Hitler Right, now, man, this is top secret. Put the blackouts up. Right, uh, Woods, Meadows, stand on guard outside the main door there and don't let anybody in. I don't care who it is. Right? right All clear out there, Hancock? All clear, sir. Good. Right, Jones, all clear. <laughs> Excellent, man. Excellent. Very good turn up. Mrs. Speak, sir. Yep. Aren't you going to wear your attire? No, not uh, not for just now. I shall just uh, I shall just wear the hat. Now, the reason I've taken all these pains to keep this matter a secret is because nobody must see this dance and it is perfect. Otherwise, we might look like a bunch of idiots. <laughs> I want a word, me. I've got to tell you, sir, that as a Scot, I feel a right Jesse dressed up in this... <laughs> this Fancy Sassenach, get up! It really is most awkward. Oh, all right, you'll, you'll soon get used to it. Will I? But, sir, Mr. Wilson does not appear as other men. What? His, his the legs are pointing in the wrong direction. <laughs> What's the matter with him? Well, do try and sort yourself out, will you? Well, I haven't done it before. It's very difficult. <laughs> Thank you very much, indeed. Yes. Now, as you... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Now, as you know, we're only £2,000 off our target, which is to buy a Spitfire. And during the coming week... <laughs> during the coming week, the good people of Warmington will be doing their utmost to raise this money. And the grand climax will come on Saturday afternoon with the procession, which is when we shall do our dance. And Sergeant Wilson will go around collecting the money. Excuse me, sir. I, you know, I, I, I don't like the idea of asking strangers for money. It's perfectly simple. All you have to do is gallop the horse and make it look as lifelike as possible. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and you make jocular remarks. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of jocular remarks? Try a, um... Ha, 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 give till it hurts. Ha, ha, ha. No, Let's try that. <laughs> ha, 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 give till it hurts. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> We're going to collect £2,000. I think they'll have to be a bit more jocular than that. Yeah. <laughs> I know, he could say, we need Spitfires to beat the Hun, put money in my mouth and it goes to my tum. <laughs> rubbish! All he's got to do is to wave his stick at the crowd and say, Give us your money or I'll bust your head in. <laughs> All right, now let's form up. And Private Sponge, you give the instruction book to Sergeant Wilson. Will you? Thank you so much. Right. Now. <laughs> now, where did we get to last time? I was having trouble with my whiffling, sir. Ah. <laughs> whiffling, yes. yes, sir. Now, it's very important that you should understand the meaning of these movements. Read the bit out about whiffling, Wilson Room. I just read, sir. Ah, yes, here we are, whiffling. Yeah, whiffling, yes, yes. Yes, the movement, the movement of the whiffling stick represents the frightening away of evil spirits. There you are. Away from what, Mr. Manry? This is a fertility dance, Oh, Mike. dear. Uh... <laughs> I don't think my mm. sister Dolly would approve of that sort of thing. <laughs> ah, yes, sir, you old duffer. It's just, it's just uh, to encourage the crops to grow. 
It's danced every spring by the young, fertile men of the village. There's not much good us doing it, is it? <laughs> you speak for yourself! You know, all right, all right, all right, that'll do. Now, Mr. Speaker, sir, I do not wish to stand opposite Private Fraser when he's whiffling. <laughs> Why not? Well, sir, I've faced whirling dervishes and I've faced charging fuzzy buzzes, but I don't want to face Private Fraser when he's waving his whiffling stick. He's got a mad look in his eye. <laughs> mad, mad. My eyes are perfectly sane. Lock up, man. What do you say I had mad eyes? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm not, not really mad. There you are, you see. Now, just before we start, we'd better check that the bells are all right. Right, left leg first. <laughs> right leg. It's the best you can do, Godfrey. Well, uh, a, a touch of rheumatism, I'm afraid, sir. I'm so sorry, sir. I beg your pardon. Look, do try and control that animal, will you? <laughs> He's not used to this type of work, you see. <laughs> right. From the top, then. Five a day. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back. I'm very proud of you. Right, now take a break and change back into your uniform. Thank you. Jones, Jones, Jones! Just a minute. Now, what's all this nonsense about Fraser hitting you with a stick? That's not like you. No, I know it isn't, sir. I can't cover it up any longer, sir. I'm in a highly nervous state. You've got some trouble at home? No, I've got trouble away from home, sir. <laughs> You'd better come in the office. Right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, sir, could, uh, could Mr. Wilson come to, sir? Why? Well, he's a man of the world. Oh, very well. Wilson? Yes, sir? Office. Ah. <laughs> you want me to walk or gallop? <laughs> Just come in the office, will you? Thank you so much. It's very kind of you, Jones. Now, Jones, get this thing off my desk, will you? Don't be sorry, sir. It's rather obvious. It sort of sticks out, you see. Now, Jones, come on. Well, it's, uh, it's rather delicate, you see. It's uh, Mrs. Fox. Mrs. Fox? Yes, you see. She's, she's a widow lady, sir, and we have a certain arrangement, and, and recently we've been walking out together. Walking out where? Well, all over the place. <laughs> I mean, I go round to her place of a Saturday night with a couple of pork chops, and, and, and she cooks them, and we have them together. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, not, there's nothing between Mrs. Fox and me. I mean, it's a purely Teutonic arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> and as I say, I'll go round to supper on a Saturday night, and, and then we have supper together, and we listen to In Town tonight, and when the man says, carry on, London, I go home. <laughs> I, I really don't see what this has got to do with me. Well, recently, you see, sir, affection has been taken by another. Ah. Yes. Who? Uh, Mr. Gordon, the town clerk. What? Why well, not that silly, bald-headed old duffer, do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean he's a bald-headed old duffer just because he's got a bald head. I mean, he'd be, be a silly old... Wouldn't he? I mean, he'd be a silly old duffer even if he got a full head of hair. Yes, you make all, all, right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> but everybody knows he's a roué and a philanthropist. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I still don't know what you want me to do about it. Well, sir, I want you to speak to us, sir. I couldn't possibly do that. Yes, you must, you must. You must, sir. There, I've written down their telephone number. There. Now, don't you go spending it in a round mind. Yes, but I could... Well, please, sir, you must speak to her, you must. Otherwise, I should be a broken man. And what good is a broken lance corporate to you, sir? <laughs> dear, oh dear. 
Now, well, what are you going to do, sir? I don't know. Hmm? Because I could ring her up. Perhaps I ought to point out to her what sort of a chap this town clerk is. Hmm. I'll give her a ring later and arrange to see her. Oh, under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but Godfrey, me. Godfrey, is that you, son? Yes, I, I was just having my hot milk before I go to bed. It has happened. Ah, I knew it would one day. Uh, uh, what has? It's mannering. He has succumbed to the lure of the flesh. Did he hear what I said, Godfrey? The flesh! The flesh! <laughs> I, I do wish you would keep repeating that word. My, my, my sister Dolly might overhear it. <laughs> so that I, I don't believe a word of it. That, that, that telly man, I heard it with my own ears. It just so happened I was passing the office door and I heard him speaking to this woman. Uh, uh, what woman? Mrs Fox, that fine... Big widow woman. <laughs> well, well, Mr. Mannering's a, a pillar of respectability. Perhaps, man. It's men like him that are the worst. I looking down their noses at other folk and all the time deep inside lust. Lust. <laughs> Sheer naked lust. <laughs> now tell him on the fires of hell are lying and wait for him. He's doomed. Doomed. <laughs> I think the whole thing is nonsense. Nonsense, says it. Listen, I heard him arranging to meet this woman at the Marigold Tea Rooms tomorrow morning at 10.30. If you didn't believe me, come and see for yourself. I, I will, just to prove that you are wrong. Right. I'll meet you there. Uh, uh, and don't forget, it's your turn to pay for the coffee. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Listen, Pikey. I must speak to you, boy. It's very important. I want some information, you see. You know Captain Main Warren? What time does he go for his morning coffee? Oh, uh, 10 30, regular as clockwork, every morning, Marigold Tea Rooms. Why? Well, my information is that he's meeting a certain lady there. Oh, no, no, Mr. Manning doesn't know certain ladies. He's married. <laughs> <laughs> She's not so much a lady as, as a kind of a big. Uh, woo, woo. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I write this gossip column for the Eastbourne Gazette called Whispers from Warmington. Yes, in, yes, indeed. Oh, I can see the headlines now. What local bank manager's name is linked with a certain widow, Lady X? No. No, you must have it all wrong. No, my information is that he's besotted with a boy. Besotted. What? L like in that film, Rain? <laughs> <laughs> see, there was this clergyman, you see, and he was besotted with a girl named Sadie Thompson. Well, being a clergyman, he wasn't allowed to be besotted. So, <laughs> in the end, he walked into the sea. Hey. Hey, you don't think Mr. Marin will walk into the sea, do you? <laughs> and if he does, he'll have a long way to walk tides out tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Captain Manor is a perfectly respectable married man. <laughs> Sick. You know your trouble, Godfrey? You live in a dream world of your own. I tell you this, man, it's the spot. He's here. I had hoped we'd had the, have the place to ourselves. Oh, don't worry, sir. I mean, uh, nobody will know why you're meeting Mrs. Fox. Look, it doesn't do for a man in my position to be seen in a public place with a flashy woman like Mrs. Fox. <laughs> in a small town like this, you know, tongues wag. Tongues wag. Oh, it's all right. I mean, nobody will pay the slightest bit of attention to you. <laughs> Shall we sit? Hmm? Well, I'm going to sit over here. Oh, I see. Right. <clears throat> you, you, you just go and sit on your own somewhere, will you? <laughs> Mr. Manrin. Morning. <laughs> That's you, Jones. You won't give me away, will you, sir? What on earth are you doing dressed like that? No, I'm heavily disguised. I don't want anyone to recognise me. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mr. Wilson. 
Oh, I'm ever so sorry I'm yes, late, Mr. Henry. No, no, do sit you down. I'm not please. usually late when I go to meet a gentleman friend, but somehow sit this down, morning please. I just couldn't... Please, no, please. Sit, <laughs> sit down. Sit down. Oh, thank you. He there, man. God for the way he manhandles her. <laughs> Well, this is cosy. Good morning, yeah. sir. Uh, good morning. Two coffees, please. Oh, aren't you having coffee with your friend, Mr. Wilson, this morning? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm having this lady with my coffee. I mean, I'm, 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 two, two coffees, please. I see. <laughs> now, Mrs. Uh, Fox, the reason I've asked you to meet me here this morning is to... Disc <laughs> yeah, what do you want, Pike? Excuse me, Mr. Manring. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Manring's on the phone. Oh, well, uh, tell her I'd ring back later, will you? Yes, ring back later, Rob. <laughs> what is it now? <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Fox. Oh, hello, nice dear. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. I haven't seen you for a long time, have no, I? I haven't, no, I have get, get out, Pike. Go on, go on. Get out. Bye-bye, <laughs> dear. Now, Mrs. Fox, the reason I asked you to meet me here this morning is to discuss a rather delicate matter. Yes. I find these affairs of the emotions uh, very embarrassing. Oh, <clears throat> well, you don't want to be shy with me, Mr. Mannering. <laughs> the point is, Mrs. Fox, you're a very attractive woman. Two coffees. <laughs> <And> I... <laughs> <laughs> What was I saying? You were just saying how attractive I was. Oh, yes. But, which indeed you are, of course. Uh, particularly to older men. Oh, you're very attractive too, Mr. Mannering. It's really got nothing to do with it. Oh, but you are. <laughs> you are. Yes, well, we, we won't argue about it. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, Mrs. Uh, Fox, you have had Mr. Jones as an admirer for some time oh. now. And, uh, and now you have another. <clears throat> Mr. Mannering! See, see, God Freeman. For goodness sake, they're playing handy pandy. <laughs> I, I think we'd better go. No, 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 man. <laughs> <laughs> Being. Being a public figure, I've no doubt that this new admirer is of great attraction to you. Oh, he is. He is. Yes. Whereas uh, Jones is just a simple butcher. But he's a fine figure of a man, Mrs. Fox. Full head, fine, distinguished grey hair. <laughs> Whereas this new admirer of yours, not to put too fine a point upon it, is, is bald. <clears throat> Mr. Mannering. You know what they say about bald-headed men? No, what do they say? <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> the thing is, Mrs. Fox, Jones is a loyal member of my platoon and I don't want him hurt. We won't hurt him, Mr. Mannering. We? Yes. He can have Mondays and Saturdays and you can have Tuesdays and Fridays. <laughs> I'm talking about Mr. Gordon, the town clerk. Oh, well, he can have Wednesdays. <laughs> what do you want now, Pike? I'm sorry to disturb you again, Mr. Mannering, but mm. Mrs. Mannering's on the phone again. Oh. I told her you were having coffee with Mrs. Fox, but she insists on... <laughs> Stupid boy. <laughs> I tell you what, I've never, I've never been so shocked in my life. That woman, that dreadful woman, actually thought that I had amorous intentions towards her. Oh dear, how awfully embarrassing for you, sir. To make matters worse, when my wife rang up, that stupid boy Pike told her that I was having coffee with Mrs. Fox. Oh dear. All hell let loose when I got home. Elizabeth wouldn't wouldn't listen to any of my explanations. Look what she did to my tie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
She rang the bell 12 times today. And if she rings tonight, you tell her I'm not here, right? Yes, I'm sir. So, all right. Evening, Sergeant Wilson. Good Hi, evening, Joseph. sir. Evening. I want to thank you very much, sir, for talking to Mrs. Fox like that. I'm sure it had a great effect upon her. Yes, it certainly has. Yes. <coughs> thank you. Come, Mallory. Come, Mallory. We can't get into the hall. Hmm? The door's locked. Yeah, Mr. Rogers shouted at us to go away. Right. <laughs> you come out now, girls. Come on. Line up round the horse. That's it. There we are. Very nice. That's it. All right. There we are, then. Yes. <clears throat> well, uh, what do you think, then, Mr. Town Clerk? Oh, they're very nice, they are. Right. Now, girls, as you know, we've got you here tonight so that we can choose one of you to play the part of Lady Godard in the procession next week. Uh, can we have the first girl on the horse, please? Yes, certainly. Right. Uh, get on the horse, dear. On the horse. Now, Corporal Jones. Sir? I want you to show the men how to strip down the Lewis gun in two minutes. And I shall time you. Uncle Arthur. And what is it? What? The hall is full of naked ladies. <laughs> Just pay attention to the lecture. It is. What? Come and have a look for yourself. Come on. Lord. Next. <laughs> Oh, good heavens. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Henry. What? Well, I... I, I, I really don't... Answer the phone, Wilson. Yes, of course, sir. Well? Hurry up, Jones. You've only got 30 seconds left. Hello, yes, 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 yes. Speaking, yes. Uh, just hold on a moment, would you, please? Uh, it's for you, sir. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, Mrs. Mannering. I told you to what? tell her I wasn't here. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm awfully sorry. I'm, I'm afraid... Uh, I'm afraid he's gone out for a little while. Oh, Mr. Mannering, no, I'm no, here. I'm sorry. <laughs> How dare you burst in on one of my lectures like this? Oh, I'm ever so sorry. <coughs> I was just on my way through to the hall. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> boys. <laughs> Mr. Gordon, let me in. It's only little me. Good evening, my dear. You're just in time. Come in. Thank you. Oh, oh Mr. Manning, stop him, stop him. What's he doing in there? What's he doing in there, Mr. Manning? I don't stop know, him, Jones, but I intend to find out. <laughs> <laughs> What's the meaning of this? Buzz off, Napoleon. This is my night to have the all. I'm appalled at you, Vicar. Wilson? Wilson! Don't keep staring at the girls. Get them covered up. What with? Come away, boy. Huh? <laughs> this is all this fuss over a few silly girls? Yes. If the Vicar wants silly girls in his own let's his affair. <laughs> Mr. Gordon, uh, shall I go and change into my swimming costume now? Gosh, I don't think I could stand the shock. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my dear, go and get changed. Would you stop me doing it again, Mr. Manry? Stop right. me, Mr. Manry. All stop, right, be, be quiet, it. Jones. Hodges, I demand an explanation of this. Keep your hair on. We're just choosing one of the girls here to play the part of Lady Godiva in the procession next Saturday. Lady Godiva? Yeah, Lady Godiva. And it's much better than your silly Morris dancing. Oh, yeah, Morris oh, dancing is not oh, silly. Nice. Just a minute. Mr. Town Clerk, do I understand that one of these girls is going to ride naked through the streets of Warmington? Yes, it's a tribute to the brave city of Coventry. Uh, the girl won't be bare, of course. Uh, she'll wear um, fleshings. <laughs> it's all right, sir. It's quite all right. They're, they're, they're overall body tights. Uh, oh, we're not living in Victorian times, you know. <laughs> Mr. Gordon, do you think I might have a little word in your ear? Certainly, my dear. Oh, he's doing it again. Stop him. Yeah, all right. He's doing it again. <laughs> 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 no, no, look here, Mr. Gordon. Oh, I demand oh, it. Just, just one moment, Captain Manring. Um, I think we have a solution. You don't want one of these young girls as a Lady Godiva. Now, it's just been pointed out to me that the Lady Godiva Leofric was, in fact, a woman of more uh, mature years. Mm. So, in the course of historical accuracy, I suggest that Lady Godiva should be uh, Mrs. Fox. Oh. Oh. Quiet, please, quiet! <laughs> Mrs. Fox will be perfectly respectable, covered from top to toe in... Uh, Fleshings no. and wearing a wig of long golden tresses. She never covered her up with long golden tresses. <laughs> you would need a bell tent. <laughs> uh, yes, Elizabeth. No, Elizabeth. 
I keep on telling you that I had nothing whatever to do with the choice of Mrs. Fox as Lady Godiva. <laughs> no, dear. Y yes, dear. I it was the town clerk who decided that she should be played by somebody more mature. Uh, that is, uh, somebody of, of, of rather more ample proportions. <laughs> Yeah, I know that you have more ample proportions than Mrs. Fox. <laughs> but you're not Lady Godiva, are you? I mean, hello, hello, hello? hello? <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, having a chat to the little woman. I see. <laughs> what little woman? My wife, of course. <laughs> I've lost her. I've lost her. Yeah. Ever since the town clerk's asked Mrs. Fox to be Lady Godiva, her head's been turned completely right round. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Joseph. You see? Hmm? This is what comes of women interfering with men's affairs. The whole platoon's been knocked sideways. Mum, no, Mum, you can't come in now. We're just going to go on parade. Oh, Frank, you keep out of the way. Evening, Captain Mannering. Arthur. Yes, what is it? What's this I hear about Mrs. Fox being chosen as Lady Godiva? Well, it has nothing to do with me, Mavis. Well, you were there. What? Yes. Uh, yeah, I was. I was sort of uh, standing around. Yes. <laughs> A woman like Mrs. Fox? Yes. I'm much slimmer than she is. I mean, what's wrong with my figure? What? Well, nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> you don't want to play Lady Godiva, Mrs. Pike? I would like to have been asked. You considered the effect on your son. <laughs> His mother, riding through the streets of Warmington, clad in nothing but... but, but uh... Fleshings. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now. Session has gone past. Jones will open the door. We will burst out into the street <laughs> and start our dance. It's done, <coughs> Session's coming now. Good, good. Stand by. Yes, right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that horse somewhere. There it is, sorry, sorry. But it's frightfully heavy. It really is. Well, look, rest it on the time. table over here. All right, that's better. Yes. Right, that's Who's there? Thanks. Oh, there's somebody in the back door, Mr. Mannering. Do they know? Yes, yes, I want you to collect as much money as you possibly can. Right. <laughs> Mr. Jones! Mr. Jones! Oh, oh. Mrs. Fox, what's the matter? Oh, it was terrible, it was terrible. Oh, don't upset yourself. Yeah, there you are with your little Jack now. Now tell me what happened, what happened? Well, Mr. Jones, I went to the town hall to change in one of the rooms. I put my wigs and fleshing on the chair, then I only went out of the room for a few minutes, and when I came back, they were gone. Gone! Gone! <laughs> what a pity we're not going to see Lady Godiva after all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. It's up to us now, man. Yes. Henry, oh, it's Manning. Yes. It's a Lady Godiva. Good Lord, it's not oh. Mavis, is it? I do wish you'd keep that woman in control. <laughs> Don't look, don't look, Mr. Mandarin. Whatever you do, don't look, sir. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Never get over the shock. No, and neither will the horse. <laughs> 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 <laughs>